Um, my name is Alex, and I'm the lead of the D digital banking development at Hellenic Bank. Uh, previous to Hellenic Bank, I was at Goldman Sachs in London for 10 or so years. Um, there, the last couple of years, I led the software development efforts to um, release the Marcus UK Deposits platform, where we essentially built a new online retail bank from scratch. Um, and today, I'd like to talk to you about how to del deliver software um, fast to customers who need them the most. Um, and specifically, though, how this can be challenging in big organizations uh, which uh, have their own complications, and what we did in Hellenic Bank to overcome these challenges and ensure that we were able to release uh, the new Hellenic Bank mobile app, which went live January this year. So um, imagine you're a startup, you're five guys working in the basement of your, your grandmother's house, um, and you're, you're working on this exciting proof of concept. Um, so you guys are working together, you're developing new features by the hour, um, and it's exciting times. Now, the, the application grows and grows and grows. More and more features um, uh, get onboarded onto it. Uh, it becomes uh, more mature. Slowly, you start getting investment. Um, you start getting your first customers. Um, and your startup starts growing. Um, however, a few months in, disaster strikes. And one of your releases goes wrong. So a software developer made a mistake somewhere. Um, and now a customer had had financial impact. So you take a look at your processes, and you realize, well, this developer made a mistake. How about from now on, I have this developer review this developer's code? So you start introducing code reviews into the process. A month later, you have another issue, and you realize the feature wasn't well tested, because you have the developers testing as well. So then you, you decide to introduce a QA role as well, and you, you decide that, well, maybe I need someone else, a different pair of eyes, testing this feature as well. So now you have QA in the process as well. Then you realize that, well, every time I release, there's impact to the customer, so you need the business approval. And then you realize you need to pen test your solution, stress test to ensure it can uh, handle high load. And it starts getting really, really complicated. Also, let's not forget about the fact that this startup has grown. These five people here each ha now have teams of 10 people or more under them. So it now probably looks something like this. Now, the complications we said before, plus the extra complication having all these different teams working together and trying to, to communicate with each other and, and get something out quickly, you realize that they're a lot slower than what they were when they were just the five people in, in the basement. And so I'm now going to transition the example to what a traditional bank may look like. Traditional bank does a thousand different things for their customers, and they probably have hundreds of different systems. So in this example, you see you have the customer, and the customer interacts with the bank through many different mecha mechanisms. So they go to the branch, they call the call center, they use the mobile app, the website, the ATMs, and there's more where this came from. However, every time the customer tries to use the bank, they expect to see the same information. For example, if their balance is 210 in the mobile app, of course it needs to be 210 in the website as well. So you need a key, a core place where this uh, information is stored and, and someone who provides this information, golden source of the data. In this example, the core banking provides the balance. So the core banking has this information um, in its own system, and it needs to give it to all these other systems here. So what they usually do, all these systems need it, what they usually do is they expose an API. And this allows all these systems to use it. Now imagine. The core banking system also exposes APIs to get transactions. The payment system also exposes APIs to make payments, the cards for card information. You could end up with hundreds and hundreds of APIs in one company. So it's really important you get them right. There's nothing, there's nothing that special about APIs. Everyone does them. But what we made sure we did at Hellenic, we, we ensured we invested really heavily in APIs because they're the backbone of everything you do. So we use the REST API standards. We ensured everything is fully documented, but more importantly, we ensured that anything we make is reusable across the board. So instead of, writing, instead of writing code in the core banking team to give the balance five times, and you write the code five times, we write it once, and all of them use it. But this needs a lot of careful planning to ensure that everything you do is reusable. So the set of APIs that we use to deliver the new mobile app has since been used for many other applications in, in Hellenic. 
and some of them not even customer facing. Now, having system dependencies, cross system dependencies, will definitely create uh, one, one definite problem for you. You have, uh, you're, you're going to become slower because one system is depending on the other system to move on. So in the same example, you have the core banking, which may need one month to prepare the current balance uh, API for everyone to use. So these guys are waiting around for a month. And after the month, they start developing themselves using the API to deliver a nice user interface for the customer. So that's total two months until, until the, 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 uh, the customer gets the feature. So one thing, well, what if I told you, however, that the mobile app team doesn't need to wait on the API to be ready before they can start development? What if I told you that if the core banking team is able to describe in enough detail what the API will look like when it's finished, these guys can already start development. So that's exactly what we do. We use what's called a contract-first approach using open API standards. And what we do is, before development even starts, we spend, we, we all get in a room, the different teams who may use this API and, and the team that's going to build it, the core banking team. And we spend significant time to design the API. We design the inputs, the outputs, exactly what the object looks like. And that, that immediately unlocks development, both from the core banking team and from the mobile app team. They start concurrently. So now, um, what that means is one month development, one month development concurrently, you end up delivering in half the time from what you had before. Um, so we've spoken about the different types of systems that are, that are around in a bank. We've spoken about how they interact with each other and also how you can optimize that interaction to ensure that you can get things out faster. However, you're still left with a big problem that each team needs to build their tech. And each team needs to build fast. Because in today's world, there's, there's no um, slack for, for being slow. So the way we, uh, we ensured we can do that is we invested in a modern technology stack. Um, and the re uh, so what we use is Angular uh, JS. We use Android iOS native. And we write Java microservices, which are deployed using Kubernetes in the cloud. Now, what the modern technology stack gives us, apart from the fact that it's really cool to work on them, is that they were able to adopt industry standards. And this is the, the big deal. So we don't need to customize and figure out our own way to do high availability, scalability, and all these kind of things, because they've been sold, solved in the industry for years. So we ensure we follow the industry standards. That means less customization. We follow proven methods. And we're able to, to deliver faster. The second thing we ensure we do, we only build where necessary. So imagine a place like, like Hellenic Bank. We do a 1,000 different things for our customers. There are some fintech companies that do one thing, and they do it really well. So the idea here is we could do 999 things and leverage that company or that software as a service or that third-party provider to do that one thing for us. That frees up our own time to work on things that are more specific for our target market. As an example, if you guys have ever used Revolut, and you've noticed that when you enroll, you're able to scan your ID, and, and it matches your face, and it's part of the ID, ID verification check, they didn't write that themselves. They collaborated with someone else who did that part, and they focused on delivering other things for the customers. So that's what we do as well. Um, build to maintain. This is so important because what people sometimes forget is you might go away, build something for an entire year. When you release it, you're going to have to support it and make changes to it. If you didn't build it with, in, in good quality, using good practices, then making a change is going to be a big pain and it's going to be really slow. So you've, you've really achieved nothing. And the second thing is, if you have an embedded monitoring, alerting, health checks from day one, you're going to struggle understanding what's wrong with your, with your system when there's something wrong. So with the way that we've done it, we always, well, majority, we, we almost always realize there's a problem way before any customer ever raises it to us because of all these things that we have. Now, that allows us to free up time investigating where an issue came from and all these kind of things and focus on, instead of focusing all our time on running the bank, 
we focus on changing the bank and delivering new things to our customers. Um, the next thing we, we have a high focus on is continuous integration. What this means is that when the software is complete, we have automated pipelines in the cloud that are able to deliver this software to higher environments and automatically take it to the customers in production. Now, this is so important because, first of all, it adds a huge layer of safety because you avoid manual um, actions by the developers which could go wrong. Uh, but it also saves us time doing those manual actions. And finally, automation testing. If you don't test well enough in the development lifecycle and early on, you end up catching issues late, which delays the whole release. So for this, we ensure during the development lifecycle, we write unit tests, component tests, integration tests, and UI tests, which are all automated and run part of the build. And we have developers working alongside QA engineers at the same time, the developers are writing the code, QA automated engineers are writing the tests. This ensures we catch any issues early, and we have no unpleasant surprises towards the end of the cycle. So we've spoken about how we're building our tech and how the, the tech that we build um, is, is enabling us to, to deliver fast. Um, however, there's also the way you structure your teams and you structure your delivery model. Now, for this, we follow agile approaches. I'm not going to preach what Agile is to, to the crowd. Um, however, for us, what this means is every two weeks, we have a, a better, more improved version of our mobile app, which if we wanted to, we can release to the customers so they get new features. So every two weeks, there's something to show for it. Now, um, an example of where this was a huge benefit for us, the Agile approach. So when we were developing even a year-long project such as the mobile app uh, implementation, um, we were doing internal uh, demos of what we did every two weeks. So every two weeks, we were showing the latest things that we've done for the mobile app. And what we started to notice a couple of months down the line is that people weren't that impressed with what they were seeing. We, we were getting a bad vibe about the feedback we were getting. And we essentially realized that our user interface and the UX we had created was actually not that great. We, it looks like we, we hadn't nailed it at all. So, we, did, we made a, a really harsh decision at the time, and we basically threw away our user interface and reinvented it to, to what you see now today in the Hellenic Bank mobile app. Now, essentially, the, the big takeaway here is that we failed fast and we failed early. So, yes, we threw away one month of development work. However, what if we went away in a room and came back only a year later to ask for feedback and, ask for, and show it to stakeholders? If they had said then that they weren't happy with the user interface, we would be screwed. Because if we made changes there, we'd be throwing away 12 months of development effort. Um, and we essentially wouldn't be able to react to that feedback. So we would have delivered a subpar product to our customers. So this is a vital way of working nowadays. Um, and, and finally, how so, so the big challenge uh, in a place like in, a, in, in large organizations is that in order to deliver something, you need involvement from many, many, many different teams. So as an example, for, for our mobile app, we needed involvement by the core banking development teams, the mobile app development teams, the website development team, the networking, the infrastructure, the call center, and the business, of course. So imagine the project management nightmare of trying to coordinate all these people and all the little dependencies and try to get a product out. So what we did to solve this problem is we formed what's called a cross-functional team. We literally picked out key individuals from all these necessary teams, and we, we, we placed them in a virtual team, which is essentially a cross-section of the entire company. Um, and all these guys now had the same goal, the same vision, and the same thirst to deliver something awesome to our customers. And this cultural push it was a key factor to, to what allowed us to be successful. Um, on the same note, we also have the business and the tech teams under, literally under the same roof. What this means is every time the business comes with a complex change, the tech team pretty much tells them, guys, I would bring something simpler because we're going to need two months for this, and it's not worth it. And this really healthy interaction helps them come back Bring, take, take a small shortcut on what they wanted, but overall, we're able to deliver more because they're able to adapt to our feedback. And that communication has also been really vital. So those are the key points I wanted to talk about. 
Um, so a summary of what, uh, what I was saying, essentially we ensured that we invested in APIs, um, we ensured that all the APIs we made were reusable, so that we don't rebuild things time and time again, and we constantly save for any future projects that we do. Um, we ad adopted contract-first development, and this unlocked concurrent development and eliminated dependencies from one team to another, um, and expedited our delivery massively. Um, we modernized our technology stack to allow us to use industry standards, best practices, and, and develop our code really quickly. We went agile because that's the only way to do things nowadays. Um, and finally, we built cross-functional teams to have this amazing sense of ownership, um, with which, uh, which was spread across the whole firm, with which you cannot really do much if you did not have it. And with that, I thank you very much for hearing me, and uh, I'd love to take any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much there, Alex Haralambus. And we're going to take the final questions from our audience. I think we have one already. How far, how far off are we from instant in-app loan approvals? Ooh, I want that. I, I'm not the right person to, to answer this one. Um, it's, it's the type of thing that the team's looking at all the time. Uh, but um, yeah, we're not, we're not at a place to commit to timelines for anything like this at the moment. So no loans for you, Anonymous. Could you no give... at some point. <laughs> <laughs> no instant ones, though. Could you give more info on Agile in your company? Mm. And what is the change like when you went Agile? Um, it was really well embraced uh, by, by the company. It started off in one team. Um, and it was really well embraced for the, uh, by the company because... First of all, the stakeholders love it because they get to see something every two weeks. So they're worried. The board is worried. They're like, well, this is a year-long project. What are you guys doing all the time? Every two weeks, we invite them to our demos and we show them, we show them what we're doing. And they were getting excited from day one. That also meant that they got invested from day one and they started caring about it alongside the development team. Um, and they started providing their feedback and they, they then saw it integrated into the product. So not only do, does the development team love it, because um, they protect themselves by being able to show what they're doing and ensure that everyone's happy, um, but the stakeholders love it as well for the reason that I just said. And the last question from the biggest question asker in the conference, Yanis Pavlou, which is there. Yes, you, keep you keep changing places. I think he's asked more questions than anybody else in the conference, so in the, in the festival. So please give this one a very special attention. Even now, in the new improved approach, how do you continue to remove waste and the process continuously? So in any project, even the greenfield ones, even in a new organization, which just started from scratch, there's what we call tech debt, and there's basically waste all the time. You, you create waste as you create new things. Um, hopefully you're creating little waste here and there, but it accumulates. So this is mandatory. You always, so this is a good question because you always have to be removing waste. So this is literally about being open, communicating, um, talking about what's failing, not only celebrating your successes, but ensuring you're pointing out what is not working for you. And you're pointing out what's dragging back the team and what's less optimized. And you need to constantly be tweaking everything you do to squeeze out the last ounce of, of efficiency. And so this is a, pro, a, a constant retrospective action you always need to be doing um, to better your process. Alex Caralambos, I would love to, uh, I would like to thank you so much for being with us today. And uh, if anybody wants to speak to you, are you going to be sticking around? Yes, I will, yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Caralambos. Thank you very much.